You're listening to the Write Project Podcast and Radio Program, a show about writing and modern Newfoundland author culture. This program is produced and recorded at CHMR FM 93.5 FM in St. John's, Newfoundland and Labrador, and is aired on other great stations in the province and elsewhere in the country. It can also be heard online at www.chmr.ca. I'm your host, Matthew LeDrew. Welcome to a very special episode of the Write Project Podcast. Today, we've got a host of authors on to answer one of the most frequent questions that's asked of any author. We're asking them, Have you ever read anything that made you think differently about fiction? And today to answer, we have on Candace Osmond, best-selling author of Dark Tides and Killer Me. Have you ever read anything that makes you think differently about fiction? fiction or the concept of fiction yes um gillian flynn it's no secret that she's probably one of my favorite writers and it's for good reason because the first book i ever read by her was dark places and it's so i don't even know how to explain it like she takes something real that could happen it's it's fiction it's not based on any true events or anything but she takes something so removed from fantasy but weaves in this like sense of dread i don't know how to explain it and like she just makes her characters so dark but lovable and it just made me rethink fiction the way i write it all together i was just like oh it's so beautiful like the way she puts the two together i don't know well hard to explain not very many i know a lot of people disagree because a lot of people think she's not that great but i think she's amazing (laughs) she's a great writer it sounds lovely i might check her out that sounds like that sounds great you you need she's the one that wrote gone girl oh oh no she's amazing she is amazing but a lot of people are like oh she's so emo blah blah she's really not she just knows how to melt together the real world with like the feeling i've been called that and like every like to me Every pragmatist gets called emo at some point. Yeah, and it's so dumb because, like, I follow her on social media religiously. Like, she's, I'm not crazy or anything, but, like, I just love her. She's very inspiring. Yeah. Um, and she's the total opposite of that. She's a very quiet, humble, sweet, cheery kind of person um, yeah. who just happens to write dread very well. <laughs> That's an interesting point that, like, I don't know if you've ever done it. I've talked to authors before and, like, amateur writers and stuff like that about using a uh, dictation. Like, some some authors um, write using dictation. Like, they, they speak to a microphone and it records their stuff. I can't do that, and it's for this ridiculous reason. But, like, you've talked to me before, and, like, in person, I'm a pretty, like, happy, cheery, like, bubbly person Mm -hmm. and i think so and in fiction i'm a nihilist like and i can't switch between the two so like i've tried for the sake of time to dictate a novel and it's not in air quotes my voice like it's no longer nihilistic it's it's happy yeah it's it's chipper matt (laughs) yeah it's what matt chipper chipper matt yeah That's what I think of when I think of you. I'm like, he's so chipper. Oh, yeah. Hey, how's everyone doing? Yeah. Chip, chip, chipperoo. <laughs> I'm going to come over to your table and bounce next to you. And then I'm going to knock over stuff on your table like a cat. And then I'm going to go, ha ha. And then I'm going to pick it back up for you because I don't want to make you pick it up. But then I'll knock it over again. But then I'll pick it up again. Like a cat. <laughs> yeah. Cats don't pick up. They don't? I don't own a cat, so I don't know. <laughs> okay. No. Cats, cats do not, after they knock something off a ledge pick it up in their tiny mouths and put it back the way it was. Oh, well, darn. (laughs) Yeah, no, cats are just mean. (laughs) Thank you very much. Next up, we have Yasmin Dalul, one of the authors featured in Mythology from the Rock. Yasmin, have you ever read anything that made you think differently about fiction? I mean, probably. I can't think of it. Um... Or maybe not. I'm not sure. Hmm. That's a very hard question. Yeah, it is. Everyone hates that one. <laughs> it's, yeah, because it's so much pressure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like... uh, for me, it's Flowers for Algernon. Flowers for Algernon really messed me up a lot. Oh my god, Flowers for Algernon. Didn't I tell you that I, 
I was the doctor in high school. I was, uh, we put it on. It was a play for IB drama. Oh, wow. Um, I didn't know that. What was the doctor's know. name again? The mean one. Um, Yasmin. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 10 years ago. Or yeah. after, oh, my God. More than 10 years ago. I'm so old. <laughs> we're, we're all very old. Yes. Well, yeah, this was 15 years ago then. Um, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. This is because the thing is, is I'm very, I don't read a lot of variety. Is okay. Even since I was a kid, I've been mostly attracted to, like, why do you think Judy Bloom was unapologetically my favorite author there's nothing wrong with judy blue and i went through Mm -hmm. a philip roth phase too which is basically like rude judy bloom and a dude (laughs) judy (laughs) bloom with a penis we understand yeah like just you know a terrible person (laughs) judy bloom's cool we like her philip roth is a bit questionable uh questionable sorry um but yeah it's i'm you know i I stray towards those types of work. So I can't, it's hard for me to separate fiction from real life. It's a very, very challenging thing for me to do. You know, everything is always just based on reality. So I'll answer this question by saying that it's uh, to be determined. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Next on the line, we're pleased to have artist and photographer Kit Sora the visionary artist behind Kit Sora, the autobiography. Uh, have you ever seen a photo that makes you feel, think about the art of photography differently? The art of photography? Yes. Oh. Have you ever seen a photo that makes you think of photography differently? It's a loaded question. Yes. I, I would imagine there's a great few. You know, I, I sort of take each photo that I come across as a as a single thing um so I guess yeah I guess I sort of that doesn't even make sense no it does kit. focus up focus up I, I mm. there you go <laughs> you've got it there you go there you go done from kid herself you can omit that I, I will <laughs> have to <laughs> so, it's doing so good too um, I love how you on recording saying fun. That's going to be a ringtone now. Do it again. Yeah, you think? <laughs> Nutcrackers. <laughs> um, I there's been there's been a few photos I guess that sort of make me question what's photography and what's graphic design, if if that is relevant to the question. That does. Because there's there's a lot of artists out there who are doing incredible things with like photo composites, and. You know, just just editing to the point where it doesn't even look real, and it's incredible. And you know, the, the obviously the composite work is stuff that you know they've taken photos of, and they're just putting it together in one photo. So technically, it is photography because they've taken all of these photos, but then they're creating the scenes that didn't exist. So then I kind of wonder where the bridge is between photography or graphic design, or if they are literally just intertwined and intermingled and that's just the way it is. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of, I, I, you know, there's there's a bunch of incredibly talented people that I follow who post stuff all the time and I'm like, whoa, you know, what is what is life? Interesting. Um, yeah, okay. I, you know, I, I'm more of a practical effects person myself, both because I have no idea how to do what they're doing in Photoshop, um, but at the same time I don't really want to learn it because I don't want to be tempted by it. Um, not that I disagree with what the they're doing. Thing? It is and it isn't. I, you know, I kind of like the, you know, the fact that I make what I do and it's all there. Like, yeah. you know, I can show you every prop that I've made from whatever photo and I can, you know, yeah. you know show you the behind the scenes photos. Well, because um, otherwise it'd be too easy to, for you to just yeah, I, put your I, hands yeah. like this and then Photoshop in a key exactly. rather than to build a and, giant and, key. But now at the same time, I don't want to say that it's easy for no, composites it's... either because the reason that I can't do them is because it's hard. Yeah. And like, I don't know how to do them. So like, I, you know, blending and getting the right lighting and everything like that's, that's a whole other. Pixel like, density is insane for me. Like to oh get them, gosh. to get them so that the two, the two mm-hmm. composite, in, in, the two composite images have the same pixel density. Yeah. When I'm doing um, 
any kind of comps and work on my covers. That's that's always the, the struggle. Mm, yeah, so it's, you know, it's they're, they're both difficult things. I just, I kind of like the challenge of having it all physically just there. Thank you very much. Next up, we have Susan Flanagan, the breakthrough author of Supermarket Baby. Susan Flanagan, have you ever read anything that made you feel differently about fiction? Like, about fiction as a concept? Hmm. I know I've read fiction that has made me so uncomfortable that I feel stomach sick. And Oh, you have read my work. (laughs) And I think after, okay, I appreciate what the author has done, but it has soured my whole outlook on life. And although I guess I realize that the uh, actions depicted in the novel could happen Uh, I don't think I can read about them again uh, are you comfortable naming this book or is it a local person you don't want to name it no there are several but I have trouble with incest I have trouble with um abuse of people in vulnerable positions and oh it it my my husband will be there lying next to me in bed and I'll be making noises like (gasps) and he'll say oh no yeah. yeah. What are you reading? He said, Why are you reading that? You're and you're so, not alone in that. There there's and it's it's always rough to know what to do there. You know what I mean? But yeah, yeah. So I mean, uh I hesitated in reading Michael Crummy's The Innocence because of that, but then I actually really enjoyed it. And I think it was because they were so innocent and it was just so pure and the writing was so beautiful. And um I, I just finished the Hush Sisters and oh. there it was again. I got, oh, I, I, I got more I, incest and I thought, oh, oh. <laughs> if, so if a writer's feel, good, you can, you know what I mean? If a yeah. writer's good, you can, you can paper That's over right. it. Very much so worth reading. But mm. I think the reason I wrote a comedic novel is because I feel like we need to laugh and we need levity in our lives, especially right now. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have Chelsea B., author of London Calling and Christmas Mornings. Have you ever read anything, a book or an article or anything that made you think differently about fiction, like what fiction is? Uh, I took a nonfiction class in university, which was interesting because there was always the debate of, is anything truly nonfiction? No. Exactly. And, you know, there you, you take creative liberty with everything. And so at that point, if I based a novel off of like a friend's life, for example, yeah, is it is it fiction? It is fiction because I'm telling the story. I took the idea and I'm telling the story because I could give me and you the same prompt and we'd write a completely different novel. But it's like that line between fiction and nonfiction is so blurred. Does it even matter? Even memories are not nonfiction. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like your brain constructs a lot. It does. And part and there's so much that goes into storytelling. For example, I was... I... So... My partner lives in England. Shocker. But he, we went, to, he came on his first trip to St. John's. And so he, we, he was visiting and we obviously went to the rooms and it was fun. And we were walking through the exhibit with all the war memorial things. And he said, it's funny how different your newspapers were than the British newspapers. And I said, how? And he said, not one of our newspapers had the headline, Britain declares war. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh. <laughs> He's like, the same history, different telling. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's fair. That's I never thought of it that. Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have Dr. Lisa M. Daly, an aviation archaeologist who in the past was one of the editors on Flights from the Rock. Uh, Lisa Daly, have you ever read anything that made you think think differently about fiction? I don't know. I've never been one of those to say there's been a novel that has defined a period of my life or a a life-changing novel because 
every piece of fiction can bring something new into the thought processes, into life. Now there's other pieces of fiction that it's like, okay, I've read this, it's gone now. Mm -hmm. But I've never had one of those big kind of life changing moments. I've seen things that I've liked, uh, like looking at say, um, oh, Philippa Gregory, I believe her, she does like the uh, historical fictions that are really deeply focused in history and there's very little fiction to it. It's mostly the history. So I've seen that extreme for how to do historical fiction where it's almost uh, nonfiction with just that hint of fiction right up to purely out of an author's imagination and everywhere in between. So I think it's just the broad spectrum of everything fiction and what can be done has been more of an influence than any one work. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have author Shannon Green. Shannon Green is a gifted author with a talent for the strange and has been recognized in both the genre community and the contemporary literary community for his pursuits. In the past, he has been shortlisted for the 1996 Arts and Letters Award and has, has well won the 2015 Audience Choice Steampunk Newfoundland Showcase. Green has received praise for his stories The Wine Dark Sea in Chillers from the Rock, as well as his stories in Fantasy from the Rock, Dystopia from the Rock, the Hamthology, and the just-released Flights from the Rock. Thank you for joining us, Shannon. Not so much about what fiction is, but I have read many things that have made me question how we think of the genres within fiction. Um, when I was still in university, we were doing a course on comedy okay. in ancient Greek plays, and the instructor came in one day and asked, so what is comedy? And the best answer I could come up with was not tragedy. Because we define, define things by what they are, not so much by what they're not, more than we do by what they are. So saying this piece is fantasy, well, is there science in there too? Is there straight on fiction in there? Is it historical fantasy? Is it... So it becomes much harder when you look at larger and larger pictures of how does this fit into everything. So it's, I find it really hard to define anything within fiction. But when you look at, okay, this is fiction. This is a made up story. It can be told through verse, through movies, through books straightforward prose i find that one easy to get but when you start breaking it down into mysteries and romance and fantasy some of the best mystery stories i've read have been embedded in science fiction some of the best fantasy stories i've read have been marketed as mysteries so it's Getting into the small details of it, I find it very hard to define, but overall I get it. I like That's that. a rambly answer, I know, but no, I like that it's answer. a hard one to discuss. Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have Andrew Peacock. Andrew Peacock is the uh, the author of many, many books uh, and, and been involved in the writing community for some time. He wrote uh, Creatures from the Rock, which uh, for which he won a Newfoundland Labrador Book Award award. Uh, and A Brave Boy and His Cat. Uh, more recently, he wrote Viral, uh, which came out in August 2020 and features a pandemic hitting the world and the effect that it has on Newfoundland closing its borders. Um, I should state that he did not write that in August 2020. He wrote it several years before, meaning that he's in some way psychic. Um, and coming out in 2021, he has Bifocal, a book that uh, he's He's right. It's a short story collection that features art in the form of photography with Kaylee Middlecoop. Andrew Peacock, have you ever read anything that made you think differently about fiction, like as a concept, like a fictional work that impacted you that way? 
Yeah, there's a, a book uh, by Italo Calvino called If on a Winter's Night a Stranger. And okay. it's, a, it's a very strange book. I remember being at my cousin's house in Halifax and she said it was her favorite book. And I, so I picked it up at a secondhand bookstore and read it. And it's a book about reading the book that you're reading. And uh, <laughs> it starts off, you've just picked up Italo Calvino's latest novel. And then he tells you how you bought the novel and your experience of going to the bookstore to buy it. And then the next chapter is the first chapter of the book. And then the next chapter, you start into the second chapter and realize it's the first chapter over again. <laughs> so you return the book to the store and pick up another copy and it's completely different. And, and the book goes on like this and you'd swear 20 people wrote it. And it's just, just sort of such pyrotechnical writing you just you just think how can anybody do this kind of stuff and you think you know and you can have fun you can have fun with the whole idea of what a book is and yeah and and uh you have to be careful not to be corny about it yeah but, but you can do some pretty exciting things in a book that I sounds think. so much fun and, and I, I, I got, you've talked about to me about that one before, and I've got to remember to pick that up. Now when I'm editing this, I'll be able to, to remember and, and pick it up. But I, I, I'm just sitting here like that's, I'm picturing me trying to read something like that and being, or write something like that, I should say, and being too in my own head about it. Like, you've just yeah. picked up this book. You went to the bookstore. Well, what if they <laughs> bought it online? What if this is yeah. the audio book? Wait, yeah. do they have different? I've got to see now if this guy has a different version of the ebook. You know what I mean? Where it explains the process of buying an ebook instead. Like, but the thing that's so clever about it is he talks about you going into the bookstore and walking by all the kinds of books that are in bookstores. The yep. books that you know you will buy someday, the books that you think you probably will buy and have on your shelf and never read. And anybody who's ever been in a bookstore, you know all those books, right? And you yes. think, is this guy reading my mind? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Um the, 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 the books that you will buy because you feel like you have to and they will sit on your shelf and never read. I, yeah. that, that hits a very funny chord with me <laughs> because I know some authors who write those books and <laughs> I'm just, my books have sold so many. How come I have no reviews on Goodreads? Well, you yeah. see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, that's like a, a short history of time, right? Yeah. That's that's the book that they figure that the most people have not read, right? Yeah. Hawking's book, you know, it's just, yeah. you got to I, I, I actually have read that one as well as, uh, as Neil deGrasse Tyson's. I, I actually like yeah. reading science books every now and again. I find it's a wonderful fodder for, um, for, for fiction later on down the road. Or oh, even yeah. just, and I, I don't even mean science fiction. I mean, now I have facts and yeah. I can, add in a character who maybe is just like you can add in a character who's based on Andrew Peacock but who is ex obsessed with astrophysics and yep. just quotes Neil deGrasse Tyson all day long you know yeah yep. yep yeah that's fun it is. it is thank you very much next up we have Tasha Madison the author of Fabric of a Generation Tasha Madison, have you ever read anything that made you think differently about fiction? Yes, I've read a lot of things that made me di think differently. Um, kind of the same uh, example I gave earlier about My Name is Asher Lev by Kim Potok. Another book that I read as a child that made me think differently is Where the Red Fern Grows. That was a very beautiful um, and emotionally powerful book. I think I read that in like the fifth grade, fifth or sixth grade. Um, that and, book has come up so many times on this show. I cannot believe it. Everyone it's a, just talks about. I think it's a very it. beautiful book. Um, That's I, the one I where both it. dogs die, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it was so sad, and I think it was so sad. I mean, if you think about it, it's like, why are teachers making fifth graders read? You know, something like this. I mean, it's very emotionally charged. Yeah. Um, and and I think too, I didn't expect to be so moved by it. Um, I'm not. I wouldn't call myself emotional. Um, but it, it it's very powerful in a very beautifully emotional and psychological way. And so I definitely would say books like that, that even now as an adult, I still remember um, very fondly just because of how it helped to shape my paradigm of who I am as a reader and a writer. Okay, makes sense. 
that book, that book just keeps coming up. And I don't think I've ever read it. If I might have read it, but I don't think I did. And I'm just like, what did I miss? Everyone seems to have read that book. And when they explain yeah, it mean, to me. It's worth, it's worth reading, even as an adult. I mean, I think even some books now that are, you know, YA. Because, I mean, I, I read a lot of YA even now, um, even as an adult. Um, so I definitely think it can um, be universal. So, yeah, it's very beautifully written. I, I imagine so, but, like, a couple people that have been on this show have tried to explain where the red fern grows to me, and it's like, the boy has a dog, and then the dog dies, so they're sad about the dog, and then they get another dog, and that dog dies, and I'm like, what's the lesson there? I don't... Yeah, but it it, it, it changes him, um, because I think a lot of it has to do with the emotions that he has to deal with. Um, That's fair. You know, because you know, it's a coming-of-age story, and so... He's dealing with his own, you know, issues in life and how to, how do you, how do you deal with loss at that age? Um, so it actually deals with some pretty intense issues, but again, I think it does it in a very beautiful and elegant way that I think is incredibly powerful even now. Is it possible? Is it possible that 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 the red where the red fern grows is actually a John Wick prequel? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, my lame attempts to be funny. Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have Kayla Krantz, who's calling in from Detroit. Uh, she's originally from Houston. She writes the Rituals of the Night series. Kayla Krantz, have you ever read anything by someone else, not by yourself? Uh, have you ever read anything that made you think differently about what fiction is? I read a lot by Stephen King, and I also like works by uh, Ruth Ware... Lynn Weingarten, I, I just like the way that they approach suspense and kind of psychological elements with both their characters and their plot. Okay, cool. I like it. Uh, I'm also a huge Stephen King fan. I haven't uh, picked up his latest few, but I'm I'm a huge. I wrote my honors thesis on The Dark Tower. The Dark Half was my favorite book for a while. That was one of the first ones that I read from him. I really like that. I um the ending. His I know he jokes about himself. He even joked about it in uh, in It Chapter Two. But I a lot of his endings, I just shake my head at and go, "Could you plot something, Stephen? Ever?" <laughs> yeah, the endings are always kind of a little disappointing. But I think it's more about the journey than destination. That's a fair thing to say yeah okay thank you very much next up we have rebecca north author of elliot and the impossible fish from breakwater books have you ever read anything that makes you think differently about fiction um that's another one of those brain teasers and i'm sorry <laughs> that's okay um well i think in children's books there's uh there's a number of books coming out right now that you're just like, wow, I, I never even thought that this was, that this would work as a kid's book, but it does. Like, I, I don't know if you've ever seen Sidewalk Flowers. No. Okay, so Sidewalk Flowers um, is a book that is entirely illustrations, and it tells the story just, just with pictures, and it's quite a deep story. It's not like a baby book. It's a book that children... Um, older children will enjoy that adults will enjoy um and that's not something i had thought of as a work of fiction um so you know it's it that definitely changed my view reading reading that book um well i guess not reading it but looking at it and seeing the pictures of this little girl um discovering these different flowers in the city as she walks along oh interesting mm -hmm. so is it actual pictures or is it uh, illustrations uh, so it's illustrations. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's entirely illustrations, but it's not something I would have thought of before as a, as a fiction work. But that's, yeah. that's interesting. My answer to that question is pretty similar to that, where it's like a fiction book that successfully convinced me it wasn't fiction up to a point. Oh, okay, yeah. what book was, was that one? Uh, Life of Pi. That, oh, even okay, though yeah. I knew, like, if I thought about it, this is definitely fiction, I can look at the metadata and see, oh, look, it's listed under fiction. I was so engrossed while reading it that a few times my brain went, but what if it's not? Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's definitely a, 
that one is, it changes the way you, you think about a lot of things. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thanks for coming on again. For all of you, we'll be here again next week at 4.30 Newfoundland time or online at chmr.ca. Please tune in and we'll talk more about writing culture in Newfoundland.